that are getting the instruction. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, your homework on 3.1 is solving systems of equations by graphing. And basically all we're simply going to do is you, know, you can grab some extra graph paper is graph. We're just going to be graphing each of these equations separately. So you know, basically you took a look at these. They're both in standard form. So remember there's a couple different ways that we learned how to graph in standard form. You could either use the intercept method or you could use the slope intercept form. Let's not worry about the graph paper right now, guys. If you can just take the notes, we'll get and grit that in a second. So basically, um, I'm going to actually solve these in slope intercept form. So I'm going to write this equation over here. So I have 3x plus 4y equals 8. And then over here, I have x minus 3y equals negative 6. All right? Now to rewrite these in slope intercept form, if you guys remember our uh, homework on literal equations, we're going to want to solve for y. So I'm going to want to isolate my y variable. So all I do is undo everything that's happening to the y variable. You can see here my y variable is being multiplied by 4. It's being added by 3x. So I'm going to subtract a 3x on both sides. Now I have 4y is equal to a negative 3x plus 8. Now I see that my variable is being multiplied by 4. So to undo multiplying by 4, I divide by 4. Therefore, I'm left with y is equal to a negative 3 fourths x plus 2. All right, and I'll get to graphing that in just a second. Over here, you can see that my y variable is being um, multiplied by a negative 3, and it's being added by x. So therefore, I'm going to subtract an x on both sides. And I'll be left with a negative 3y equals negative x minus 6. Now we look at my variable and say, all right, now my variable is being multiplied by a negative 3. Right? So to undo multiplication by a negative 3, I'm going to divide by a negative 3. So therefore, my final equation is y equals negative, remember this is like a negative 1 right there. So negative 1 divided by 3 is going to be a positive 1 third x plus 2. All right, so when we get to graphing, so this is a little bit of work. Not all of these are going to be in, in standard form. Some of these will already be in slope intercept form, which would be pretty nice. So now we need to graph them separately. OK? Now remember when graphing, we need to, especially in slope intercept form, we need to understand what is the slope and what is the y-intercept. So here is our y-intercept. Remember the y-intercept is a coordinate point. 0 comma b. All right? So the x value is always going to be 0. The y coordinate is always going to be b, or is going to be your value of b. Remember, slope, ladies and gentlemen, is a ratio of the change in the values of the y coordinates over the change in the x coordinates between any two points. So remember when we're dealing with slope, it's, we always want to write it as a fraction. A lot of times, you know, it's very familiar. You guys should be familiar with rise over run. Um, but it's basically the change in x coordinates over y coordinates. So what I want you guys to understand is here we have a slope is both in fractions. If you did have slope that was a whole number, like 2, just put it over 1. So it's 2 over 1. So it represents a fraction. When you have a negative slope, please understand that um, negative 4 divided by 2 is equal to 4 divided by negative 2. Would you guys both agree with me the answer right there is negative 2? Would you guys agree with that? It doesn't matter if you have a negative divided by a positive or a positive divided by a negative. The answer is still going to be negative 2. So when you have a negative slope, just put the negative sign in either one, in the numerator or the denominator. All right? And I'll kind of explain why. Does it have to be in both though? It has to be in one or the other. It can't be in both? No, because negative 4 divided by negative 2 equals positive 2. So it's a negative 3 and positive 4. Yeah, you can write it like this. Or you can write it like this. That's, and that's, because that's going to give you a wrong solution. Because if you put the negative in both, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. We know that if one of them is negative, the answer is negative 2. So you don't want to, so you can't write them in both. It has to be in either one or the other. Okay? So let's go ahead and identify our slope and our y intercept here. So our y intercept is at 2. So the first thing you want to do is plot your y intercept. So you go up to 2, make a nice big point. Remember, this is the y axis. This is the x-axis. Now, the slope, I decided to put the, the negative sign down in the 4. And I'll show you why it doesn't matter. 
So therefore, if this change in the um, y coordinates is positive 3, that means I'm going to go up 3. 1, 2, 3. If the change in the x coordinates is negative 4, I'm going to go to the left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you go up 3 to the left 4. And that is what we call a slope triangle. You guys see I went up 3, left 4. You also, if you would have done it like this, then you would, have gone, you would have gone down three, and then to the right four. One, two, three, four. So do you guys see how it doesn't matter? These all lie on the same line. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK. But just imagine, look it. If you went down three, left four, that wouldn't be on the same line. OK? So it doesn't matter where you guys put the negative sign. Now let's go ahead and graph this one. This graph has y equals 1 third x plus 2. So again, I go up to my y-intercept, which is plus 2. And now, my change in my y-coordinates is positive 1. Change in my x-coordinates is positive 3. So I go up 1 over 3. 1, 2, 3. I could also go down 1 to the left 3. OK? So you guys have two equations that intersect at a certain point. Justin, put that away. Uh, no, 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 you may not. <laughs> so basically, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to be doing, OK? Um, so now what we need to do is look at where exactly are they intersecting at, OK? So we look at it and we say, oh, the intersection point is at 0, comma 2. That is your solution. OK? And when you have an intersection point, this is what we call a consistent system. All right? And since there's one point, it's independent. For your homework, you guys are going to need to know how to write these down. Okay.